you know how there are some claims that are just so stupid that there's no way to respond to them? Well, Jordan's video about human history is like that. It's an hour long and has over a million views, which is really depressing. And every sentence in it is simply too stupid to deserve a serious response. All I can do really is make fun of it. And I will. But first, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the Atlantis myth, which is central to Jordan's story. The story comes from Plato, who wrote about it in two dialogues, Timaeus and Critias, around 360 BCE. In these dialogues, a character, Critias, tells the story and claims that it's true. A few people took this to mean that Plato was saying it's true, but most people at the time simply took the it's true thing as being part of a fictional story. It's true within the fictional setting. And no, the existence of a real Critias doesn't change anything. Besides, he died some 40 years before the dialogues were written, so it's not like he was going to complain. Now, here's a summary of the story. Long ago, the gods of Olympus had divided the lands of the earth between them in a perfect manner that ensured no one would ever go to war over territory. Poseidon's territory was the island of Atlantis. He fell in love with a human woman who lived there and they had ten sons. Each son was given a part of the island to rule over as king. Atlantis had amazing natural resources, so all the kings were unbelievably wealthy. There was a great city on the island where the kings would meet and discuss matters that concerned them all. This city was an absolute architectural marvel, and it's described in great detail in the story. As generations passed, however, the divine blood in the royal family lines became thin, and the kings fell to their human nature. They became corrupt with power and wealth, and became warlike. In defiance of the gods, they began to, um... Yeah, you guessed it. Take over the world. Of course! At this time, Athens was ruled in a completely different manner. It didn't have a king, it was a republic, with elements of what we would recognize as democracy. Sure, they still had slavery, so it was far from a modern democracy, but the point is, no one had absolute power. Compared to the corrupt Atlantis, Athens was, as seen by the ancient Greeks, the perfect society. When Atlantis attacked Athens and failed to conquer it, the gods had had enough. In a single day, Atlantis was destroyed and sank into the ocean. This was 9,000 years ago, according to Plato's dialogue, so about 11,400 years ago to us. The moral of the story is, simply put, that power corrupts. Even a king with divine blood cannot be trusted with absolute power. A great society is one where, among other things, no one holds such power. There's more to it, but I'm trying to keep it short here. The point is that the story was never meant to be taken as historically accurate. But just for the hell of it, let's assume that it was. In that case, we have Plato reciting a dialogue that he himself did not witness, in which Critias says that his grandfather, also named Critias, told him a story which he was told by the sage Solon, who was told by an anonymous priest. Gotta love anonymous sources who had this passed down to him as part of a 9,000-year-old oral tradition, which, interestingly, no one else knew about. Yeah, I've found more reliable stories in my spam box. But anyway, this is the story of Atlantis. It's available online. Just Google Critias and Timaeus. You should have no trouble finding them. They're public domain. The story remained unchanged for over 2,100 years. And while Atlantis became a common theme in fiction, very few, if any, actually took the story seriously. That is, until 1882, when Ignatius Donnelly, an author and politician with no relevant degrees, butchered the story by claiming that Atlantis not only existed, but was destroyed in Noah's Flood. He revived the story, and is said to be the father of the modern Atlantis myth. Obviously inspired by Donnelly, Edgar Cayce, a psychic claimed that he was channeling the Egyptian god Thoth, also known as the Greek god Hermes, in the early 1900s. According to him, Thoth was once the king of Atlantis. This contradicts Plato's story as well as both Greek and Egyptian mythology. Not only that, he also said that Atlantis would rise from the ocean in the 1960s. 
Casey had no degrees relevant to history or ancient literature. He was just a guy who claimed to have magic pow- I'm sorry, psychic powers in order to con people for money. Now enter Michael Doriel, a cultish nut, member of the Brotherhood of the White Temple, another schmuck with no relevant degrees who wrote a popular book in 1939, The Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean. The Emerald Tablet, singular, was supposedly created by Hermes, the tablet says so, but obviously that doesn't mean it's true, and it's not what Doriel was writing about. This tablet relates to alchemy, but it's not from ancient Greece or Egypt and has nothing to do with Atlantis. The first known appearance of it is in Arabic literature between 500 and 800 CE. It's not actually known to exist, all we have are supposed reproductions and translations of it. Doriel linked the Emerald Tablet, Thoth, and Atlantis, and claimed to have translated 13 magical indestructible tablets. Scientists, who are naturally anonymous, gotta love that, studied them and confirmed that they are indeed indestructible and violate the laws of physics. But interestingly, they neglected to publish this. Doriel only ever published a popular book. That's it. The likely current location of these 13 magic tablets is, I suppose, the warehouse where the Ark of the Covenant was stashed at the end of Raiders. To sum up, the story Jordan tells us is a modern butchering of an ancient story, never meant to be taken as historical fact. Donnelly, Casey, Doriel, and later Drunval Melchizedek, who basically just rips off Casey claiming to channel Thoth, are not historians, archaeologists, or legitimate scholars of ancient mythology or literature. They're authors of popular books, trying to cash in on the fact that the story of Atlantis is something that virtually everyone has heard of, and it's something that fascinates a lot of people. But they're just hijacking it, keeping the name that people recognize and making up the rest. Anyone can write a popular book. As long as it will sell, no one cares if it's factually correct. This isn't the case with academic peer-reviewed literature, and that's why these people don't publish in academic journals. Now, Jordan will say that he's not trying to prove anything. He's just presenting a possible alternative to what we've been taught in history class. But that's the thing. There's no reason to consider it a possible alternative, because it can't be distinguished from absolute bullshit. There's no evidence to support it, so it's no more an option than any other imaginable story. Well, actually, it's less of an option because we've mapped the ocean floor and there's no trace of anything resembling the Atlantis described either by Plato or by the modern-day pseudo-historians. Basically, everything Jordan presents is absolute bunk, and uh, next time I'm going to subject you to it. See you then.